So now uh, I'm Chi Yan from Michigan State University. And this is our work, uh, surfing attack, interactive hidden attack on voice assistance uh, using ultrasonic guided waves. And this is a collaborative work with University of Nebraska Lincoln and Washington University in St. Louis. Let's start. So we all know that voice assistants are very popular. And some of the most popular voice commands include uh, read, read a message, take a picture, uh, call someone, send a message, and also uh, or even do a web search or even interact with your smart home devices like open my garage door. Right? And we also see that those big companies like Apple and Google, they are really want to push forward the functionality of their voice assistants to make them more powerful. Right? So we can see that the Siri and the Google Home, uh, Google Assistant, they are becoming more and more powerful. They can control more and more devices. So we all know that there are definitely security risks here. And these intelligent voice assistants, they are not safe. So we have seen that several inaudible attacks uh, towards voice assistants. And the attacker can control your device even without using any audible sounds. Right? So in this case, when the attack happens, basically the victim cannot hear anything. So the insight is that we can actually send ultrasound signals over the air to attack the device, to inject commands. So here is a breakdown of the voice um, of a microphone, which includes a diaphragm, an amplifier, a low-pass filter, and an analog digital converter. So ideally, the output of amplifier should be an amplified version of the input signal. However, actually, uh, when because of the non-linearity of the microphone hardware, uh, the output of the diaphragm and amplifier will include some high-order terms that's generated by the non-linearity of the microphone device. Because of this second order, uh, uh, the, the, the second order term in the output of amplifier, actually, if we input two audio frequency, uh, audio sound frequency signals, uh, we will generate one of the uh, signal that F1 minus F2, that is in the lower frequency range, that becomes audible. And this low frequency uh, audible signal can be used to inject voice commands. So now if we send ultrasound signals, it will be interpreted by the microphone as uh, audible sounds uh, to control the device. So now we are thinking about whether we can transmit these inaudible sounds through other mediums other than the air. So we find a perfect medium that is a table. So you all know that uh, people like to work on their computers and while putting their phones by their side. Uh, so it's a very common scenario when in a cafe uh, shop or in an airport, you put your phone down while you work on your computer, uh, you read books. So this creates an opportunity for us for surfing attack uh, to attack the device. So here's our typical attack setup. We use a piezoelectric uh, tra tra transducer that is placed underneath the table to inject voice commands. And the voice commands will be transmitted through this ultrasonic guided wave and propagated through the table to attack the device, to inject commands to the device. So now, the different types of medias can really be those different types of tables. So the basic idea of our attack is to use solid materials as transmission media to inject uh, voice commands. Leveraging this basic idea, uh, we propose surfing attack. Uh, surfing attack so utilize the solid materials to, uh, as a transmission media to transfer the attack signals as ultrasonic guided waves. So our attack have very good uh, properties, for example, uh, non-line of sight. So unlike the in-air in, in transmission, uh, we are not uh, affected by uh, line of sight blockage. And our attack is also omnidirectional. So you can see in such a very busy table, we can launch attack to attack the device. 
And we can also launch a long range attack. Uh, so here we use a 30 feet long uh, aluminum metal, metal sheet. And we can launch attack uh, from 30 feet uh, distance away to, to, uh, to control the voice device. And we can even attack multiple devices simultaneously <laughs> if, the, if this device had the same wake up word, like OK Google. So you can activate multiple devices simultaneously to control them. And surfing attack also enables a hidden interactive attack. So here we conceal the attack device under the table, which will be covered by a table close. So the attacker first turned down the volume of the device to make it in a less noise, a less alarming. Now the attacker tried to call someone. So with, without making any noise, the, the phone started calling uh, the friend of the owner. And there's no any vibrations because the vibration of the ultrasonic guided wave is ultra minor. So you cannot hear or sense anything. So I just came from the Chicago airport. I just take a random picture, see that people put their uh, phones on the table unattended. Right. So this metal table is actually a perfect medium for surfing attack. So you can see that a lot of phones are put down on, on the metal table unattended. So now, how the attack really work? So we are using a, a waveform called the ultrasonic guided wave. And this wave is actually widely used to inspect and screen many engineering structures and particularly for the inspection of those metallic uh, uh, pipelines around the world. In a single location, it can examine the pipeline uh, hundreds of meters away to find uh, some structural damage. And it has three unique properties, uh, sound wave dispersion and the wave modes. Uh, so it actually, when the, when, when the ultrasonic guided wave enters the, the, uh, the solid material, it will be dispersed into multiple wave modes. And those wave modes have different frequency and different propagation speed, and they interfere with each other. And also, the propagation is very material uh, dependent. So if you have different material, different, different uh, geometry of the structure, you will have different propagations. So here we see that uh, when we have an ultrasonic guided wave, it propagates through, it's separated into two different wave modes, S0 and A0. S0 is faster than A0 wave mode. So then after a while, these two wave modes start interfere with each other to generate those type of waves. And now we need to select a good attack wave to launch our inaudible attack. So first, let's talk about how we select our attack wave. First, we want our attack to be uh, low dispersion, that means we want to minimize the number of component frequencies that are uh, dispersed by the medium. And narrow band input signals are perfect uh, for, uh, for restricting the wave dispersal. And the second, we want to have low attenuation. And for certain type of materials, ultrasonic guided wave really can achieve very low attenuation. And we also want our attack to be easily excitable. So here we just buy off the shelf a circular piezoelectric disc, which is very cheap, only $5 as our attack device. And we use a lower order LAM wave A0 uh, to achieve a high attack uh, signal reachability. So this, this is a, uh, A0 wave. It actually have a higher uh, displacement uh, towards the surface of the table so it can generate a stronger signal to reach the device. Now we select our attack wave. So how can we generate our attack waves uh, by embedding the voice commands? So here, here is how we do it. Our goal is to preserve uh, the similarity between the recovered signal and the original voice signal. So here we use our amplitude moderation. So you all know that in amplitude moderation, we have a moderation, uh, moderation depth, and we have a baseband signal that includes, uh, contains the, uh, the, the, the voice commands. And in addition to the amplitude moderation, we apply a turkey window. 
And then we have this central frequency, which is at an ultrasound frequency, uh, be moderated to the carrier frequency uh, to, uh, to launch the ultrasonic attack. And then we optimize the central frequency, the moderation depth, and the Turkey window uh, by measuring the nonlinearity the non responses. And for more detail of this optimization, please refer to our paper. So here's an example. We have original signal, OK Google. Without applying our Turkey window, you can see the signal is basically distorted, and there are a lot of signal components that are missing. However, after applying our window, uh, you can see that uh, a lot of original signals characteristics are preserved. So now we can uh, launch a pretty accurate attack uh, by surfing our, um, our, way, uh, our ultrasonic guided waves through different types of materials to reach the device. Although you can see there are some increase in the, in the noise, uh, but actually the microphone itself can, uh, can sustain, uh, can sustain uh, some noise and it can still recover the voice commands. So here we want to evaluate whether the ultrasonic guided wave can actually trigger the nonlinearity effect. We place a smartphone on the table and then we use uh, the piezoelectric transducer underneath the table to launch the tech. So here we have a baseband voice signal that is a chip signal which is moderated to the 25.3 kilohertz uh, carry frequency. And then for the recorded voice signal, you can see we have a very strong first harmonic and a second harmonic. So there's definitely a very strong nonlinearity here because the first harmonic signal is almost identical to the original baseband signal. So this ultrasonic guided wave definitely can be used to carry the voice commands to attack the device. So here we design our attack system uh, by first using uh, a voice synthesis uh, to actually synthesize the, vi uh, the victim's speech. And then we send the speech uh, to the attack device hidden underneath the table. And then the attack signal will be injected to the transducer uh, to launch the attack. And we also deploy a tapping device uh, to capture the voice response and then send it back to the remote controller then the remote controller can, send, uh, can start looking at a, a follow-up command and send a follow-up. And then we have this interaction loop. So in our experiments, we use this uh, waveform generator as a signal processor. Uh, we use this piezoelectric transducer as a tech transducer. And we use a microphone, uh, we, we use a smartphone as a tapping device. So now we demonstrate two different attacks. So the first attack is uh, basically try to read a message. So we all know you are using uh, like uh, the two-factor authentication. The, authent the authentication code will be sent to your smartphone. And the attacker can utilize this two-factor authentication to actually extract your passcode. And we also launch a very powerful fraud attack. So here is our attack demo. In this, in this fraud attack, on left-hand side is Alice device, on right-hand side is Sam device. So Alice will be attacked using the surfing attack. So surfing attack first unlocks the victim device and then make a phone call. Calling Sam mobile. So the, actually the Alice will not be able to hear anything. So now uh, Alice, Alice's friend, Sam, will uh, pick up the phone. Now we can synthesize Alice's voice to send a synthetic message uh, through this uh, phone call to Sam. Hi, Sam, I forgot the new access code at the lab. Can you tell me? Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot the new access code at the lab. Can you tell me? So Sam will respond. Sure, it's 2501. So now the attacker, so now the attacker actually can capture uh, the responses uh, from her friend, right? So it can be very powerful because we are really using the victim's device to call her friends uh, to, to deceive the friends. Okay? And this can be very powerful because uh, any fraud call detection, like a call, call ID based authentication, uh, will not work because we are really using victim device to make the phone call. 
So this multi-round conversation between the attack device and the victim is enabled by, uh, by concealing your attack device underneath the table and launch uh, this, uh, this attack. And it can be used to steal financial trade secret and a lot of uh, uh, information. So you may wonder how it, uh, how it can be applied across different smartphones. And in our experiments, we evaluated 17 smartphones. Among those 17 smartphones, we successfully attacked 15 of them. And those smartphones include uh, the very popular Android phones and uh, uh, Apple phones. And we fail on two special cases. Uh, one is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. One is the, uh, the Huawei Mate 9. So we find that these two phones are kind of special. And they have a, uh, so they have a curved front screen and a curved back, back, uh, back cover. And they also have a very special material in their phone body. So actually, this will cause uh, the delivery of energy very difficult to, uh, to reach the device. And we suspect that the reason of the failure is really caused by the structure and the material of the device. OK. Oh, sorry. I'm going backwards. So we do a lot of evaluation among different factors. For example, the noise, the verbal conversation, the directionality of the attack, the attack distance, the table materials, uh, lock screen, table thickness, interlayers, and the phone cases. So uh, we, I will talk about these three evaluation factors. For the other factors, please refer to our paper. For attack distance, uh, so we, we do the experiment uh, over this 30 feet long aluminum metal table. And we use a power amplifier to extend our attack range. And in the end, we can achieve uh, attack distance of 30 feet with only uh, 0.8 watt attack power. In comparison, the best over-the-air uh, speaker array can achieve 30 feet distance with uh, 6 watt attack power. So we can save the energy by 87%. And we can even go beyond the 30 feet distance because that 30 feet uh, long table is the longest that we can find in the market. <laughs> so we also evaluate different types of materials. So basically, if we have an impedance mismatch uh, between the boundary of the phone and the table, there will be energy that will be uh, reflected. So we evaluate different types of materials like aluminum metal, steel metal, grass, MD, MDF is a type of wood and uh, a, a type of plastic. And we, the, uh, the, and we find that uh, the best energy, de energy delivery can be delivered when the table material are the same as the device body material. For example, for the aluminum metal sheet, steel metal, and glass, we can achieve very good performance. While for the MDF and the, the plastic, the performance is not very good. Uh, that's because those structures all have uh, porous structures. They have, very, uh, they have a lot of holes in the middle of the material that can actually absorb ult ultrasound. So it's better uh, to work on those wood, wood tables uh, instead of the glass table and the metal table to avoid our attack. So we also evaluate whether our attack works on the lock screen. So here are the two options for uh, Apple iPhone and Android phones. If we enable these two options, uh, all the attack commands that we send to the device will work. So we, we validate that with the current, uh, the most recent iOS and Android. If we enable these two options, and all the, all the uh, attack commands uh, from serving attack will work, even if the device is locked. So now, how to defend against our attack? The general countermeasure is that you need to keep an eye on your device when you put your device down. And also, you can reduce the touching surface uh, area of your phone with your table. And you can place your device on a soft woven fabric uh, before touching the tabletop. So if you use a silicon, valley, uh, silicon uh, rubber phone case, that doesn't work. That doesn't help. And you probably need to use a thicker phone cases 
uh, for example, using wood. And the best, you can disable your voice assistance on lock screen and lock your device when you, when you put it down. So we also design another software-based defense mechanism just by looking at the spectrogram. The attack signal, recorded attack signal, actually have some high-frequency components that can be used to effective detect attack. So next time when you are in airport, pay attention to your phone. So try down to uh, put your phone unattended in those metal uh, tables. So you may wonder whether our tech can work on those standing voice assistants like uh, Alexa and Google Home. Because those microphones are high up, our ultrasonic guided wave will lose a lot of power when they try to uh, transmit those high. However, we find out that uh, actually, when we increase the power of ultrasonic guided wave, those guided wave can be get into uh, the air, to vibrate the air to become in-air ultrasound signals. And if you have enough power, the ultrasonic guided wave can become over-the-air ultrasonic signal to attack the device. And in conclusion, uh, we explore how we can use ultrasonic guided wave uh, through the solid materials to attack the voice assistants. And we enable the conversation between the attack device and the victim device. And the surfing attack successfully attack uh, 15 popular devices. And we imagine a lot of devices will be vulnerable to this attack. And we also achieve 30 feet long distance attack uh, through a metal table uh, with a very low power profile. For more information, please visit our website, Surfing Attack. Thank you very much. Questions, uh, please state a name and affiliation before asking the question. Hi. Uh, thank you for a great talk. Thanks. My name is Ben Grass. I'm from the FU University in Amsterdam. I have a very uh, basic question, um, which is how come this doesn't work over the air? Doesn't work what? Over the air? It doesn't seem to work over the air, I assume. I don't understand why that is. Uh, you mean over the air ultrasonic attack? Over the air ultrasonic, it does work. It does? Yeah, it does work. Okay. It, it does work. So you can use air as a propagation um, uh, medium to attack the device. Uh, so uh, previous papers have shown that, uh, like dolphin attack is using ultrasound over the air uh, transmission to inject commands. That does work. Okay. Yeah, but our, we are using a different transmission medium, uh, different from air. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So the, the power the device that used to power this attack, is it small or it looks like something big to hide under the tables or something? I mean, coming back to the Chicago example, if there is some big black box over the table, I may notice that. Oh, yeah. So this attack device can really be portable. Uh, so we are actually right now designing just using your smartphone to generate ultrasound signal uh, to, ex to use a very simple amplifier, amplify the signal to excite the ultrasonic transducer. And the transducer is very small. It's very, very small. So it, the, device, the tech device can be a portable device. So in our experiment, we are using the waveform generator. So waveform generator is kind of a large device. Uh, but we can replace it using a, just using a smartphone to do that. Hi, Tatsuya Mori from Waseda University. Yes, hi. Uh, about countermeasure, have you considered using the accelerometer to detect the attack? Accelerometers. meters, uh, we haven't considered about that. Yeah, that's a very interesting direction. Maybe uh, those sensors on the smartphone can be used to uh, detect this uh, minor, minor vibration. Yeah, that's, that's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Kang Muri from Seoul National University. Hi. Uh, I thought this attack is very interesting, and but I think uh, uh, I guess the victim can sense the vibration of the table, of the table. So uh, I want to know how how strong the signal is. Right. So basically, a human cannot sense any vibrations because the ultrasonic guided wave have ultra minor uh, vibrations. So it has like nanometer uh, range. So so, so we put actually we put a water uh, upon the table uh, in this uh, 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 a demo video. 
So you cannot see any vibrations on the water, water surface, and the human cannot sense anything. And we test it using a uh, user study, so no one can be, uh, will be able to sense anything. Uh, even, actually, even if you increase attack power, still the, vibra the, the vibration of ultrasonic guided wave is ultra minor. Uh, Tyler Kazmarek, uh, MIT Lincoln Lab, thank you for the talk. Um, going off of that, was there any mitigating effect through having these subjects put physical contact with the table? For instance, if I had my arm down um, next to the phone. Uh, if you put your arm ne next to your table, uh, that doesn't help. But you can lift your, uh, your, your phone up like to reduce the touching surface mm -hmm. between your phone and the table. And then um, does it require any particular configuration of the phone itself? For instance, if I flipped it over so the screen was um, face down, would that uh, mitigate the attack? Uh, so we actually evaluate the attack uh, when the phone is facing down or up, upwards, and our attack uh, will work, uh, yeah, regardless of whether you put it upwards or downwards, uh, because this uh, phone factor of the phone is very small. Mm -hmm. So you can actually uh, very effectively uh, uh, like transmit the ultrasonic guided wave to reach the microphone. Right, yeah, so you. it doesn't matter. We've got time for one more question. All right, if there are any more questions, uh, let's thank the speaker. Thank you very much.